This episode covers days 9 and 10 of our tour as we travel from the historic city of Cuenca to the Parador Guadalupe and then into Portugal for two nights at the Luna Hotel located west of Covia in the highest mountains of Portugal. Good morning viewers, it's day 9 on the 9th of September and we're just leaving the Parador at Cuenca for the Parador in Guadeloupe which is west from here in the direction of Portugal because the following day we'll be going to Portugal This morning Wayne's leading, it's the same uh, number of bikes, same people riding in our group today. What, 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 what? What, it's just dead completely? Okay, I'll park up here then. We have a dead Ducati, I think. Well, it's got a front light on. you got ignition light, haven't you? Oh, I'm pushing. I think so. Okay. Hopefully. He's alive at the bottom of the hill. So it's another nice parador we're going to in uh, Guadeloupe. Well, it looks good on paper. So uh, I think we'll catch up with you a bit nearer. A bit further along the road, it's uh, just gone 9.15, the temp for those that like this sort of thing is uh, 18 degrees currently but it's due to go up to approximately 30 and we have an initial arrival time of 3 o'clock, but you know how these things go. So the Ducati has got uh, a dodgy battery by the sound of it, but it's started on the bump anyway, so probably because it hasn't been used yesterday, so Right, we'll catch up with you further along the road, viewers So, viewers, welcome back, we're a few kilometres out of uh, Cuenca and we've joined the uh, auto route well, this is the uh, auto route that heads towards Madrid, but we're going to follow this for about uh, six kilometres down here. There was a fuel station about that we just topped up, so it's uh, easy to get fuel on this route. Uh, so we've got about six kilometres, and then we're going to turn onto the 294 towards, uh, is it Hute? H-U-E-T-E. Welcome back viewers, I thought I'd give you a quick update, so we just turned off that uh, road we were on, we're now on the N400, which sort of mirrors the main road, or you might call it a motorway, which is over to my right hand side, and we'll be crossing out under it and whatever, it's, it's, this I guess is the old route, uh, before they bought, built the auto route to my right hand side. I thought it would be more interesting and certainly there's usually very little traffic on these older end roads but they make interesting riding as there's so, uh, so little traffic you can press on a bit It's a lovely morning Another Yarrow weather forecast It's got to be hot guys, hot All day? Yes, all day, hot. And tomorrow? Not sure. But today's going to be hot. Might even stop somewhere and have some lunch. Not guaranteed, obviously, but we might do. 
but you can be assured there'll be multiple Ducati fuel stops. It does about 100 miles and then it's panic on. Right, catch up with you a bit later. We're heading now south on the CM310 and we're going to follow this for at least 24 kilometres. Countryside, very little traffic, what's not to like about Spain? So we've got Brian ahead of me and uh, Michael up ahead on the Panigale. Petrol Panigale we'll call it now I think. Bit of close formation flying this morning I think by Mr Morris. Oh I forgot to tell you, it's Mr Morris's birthday, that's why he's doing the, the leading today. He's feeling in leadership mode. And obviously we are mourning the loss of our Majesty. We heard about that last night, just as we were taking our group picture outside uh, the Cuenca Parador. So a bit of a sombre evening for all. So it looks as though uh, we're, we're skirting west across south of Madrid to our next stop. And it doesn't look as though there's uh, much in the way of very interesting twiddly roads that we've been experiencing in recent times. We've got to get across there and uh, this is one of the few roads, unless you're going to go onto really minor roads. So uh, we, we're at the 281 kilometres to go point. And we've got this for about 5 kilometres until we reach the N301 for those of you who follow on a map. Lovely meal with, with that, that Parador Quenky, you should stay there if you can. Fantastic. It, it is a bit expensive, so go as a group and then you can get a good discount. I'm sorry if I told you this, but the rack rate I was told was 270 euros per room per night. Jeez, uh, we didn't pay anything like that on a group rate, so uh, I think uh, I think I asked to uh, keep it down between about 85 to 90. I can't remember what we paid there but nothing like 270. Anyway, as I was saying, the, uh, yeah, the Parador was fantastic. The food we had was fantastic. Yesterday evening we had uh, another little mousse bouche to start with, then we had rice, like a seafood rice soup. It was lovely. In fact, it was so lovely. If you had that, you didn't have a lot of room for everything else. And then we had uh, crispy duck confit with a gratin sort of potato addition lovely sauce uh, what was it the sauce then there was an ice cream in with honey jelly never had honey jelly before so so far we haven't had a duff meal we haven't had a duff hotel so tonight might be different. No, the Parador that we're going to tonight in Guadalupe is meant to be. I mean, it's a I think this is a UNESCO. Yeah, it's a UNESCO um, hotel. Um, so it's meant to be a very pretty. All right, I'll catch up a bit further down the line. We're still uh, we're on now the N three hundred and one three zero one. Catch up in a while. So we're on the CM3000, we've got 236 kilometres, just thought I'd show you this uh, really open countryside we're covering here, which obviously allows us to cover quite a lot of ground quite quickly. We just stopped for a little bit of uh, coffee and water at this little uh, emporium here. Let's go into low mode, customised. Spotlights on, check. Colin and Sarah have just turned up. I don't know if they're stopping or just... Yeah, yeah, we're good. Yeah, clear behind. CM3000, here we continue viewers. It's all a bit straight road, this bit, so I'll uh, talk to you later once, uh, hopefully we'll get some wiggle at some point, but it is just, we've got to get west, and 
so we're approximately sort of riding east to west below Madrid. Originally we were going to stay there but that was pre-Covid and then I thought well we weren't sure how long it's going to take to get over Covid, we weren't sure how quickly we'll be able to do this trip so in the end I decided that perhaps uh, two days in uh, the major city was possibly not a good idea if Covid was still virulent in the uh, these parts of Spain. It seems to have been uh, it's a lot better now. We haven't had any uh, restrictions placed upon us to wear masks or anything like that in the hotels. There's lots of uh, lotions everywhere people are encouraged to to use but gave me something to do to say something to camera really because there's not a lot else to do at the moment. Follow the leader. Wayne's enjoying his birthday ride. He's waving at something. No idea. Oh no he's waving at enjoying his birthday ride. Okay, gotcha. Right, we're just on a bit of a fuel saving mission here at the moment because the Ducati's run a bit on uh, low for a little while. So there should be a fuel station up the road here in the town of Sonseca. We've been filling up at uh, around half a tank or so because some of them there are some large stretches at times so uh, if he needs it and I'm on half it's worth topping up Repsol, 1.4 kilometres. Hold on, I think Mick's... Um, oh, it might have done, hold on. Mick went left at the roundabout before one. Uh. We're looking for fuel for him, which is only just a half a kilometre up here, but he's obviously decided to make his own decisions. So we'll wait up here for him. Okay, yeah. Not a lot to see other than a few clouds in the sky. Not bad uh, summary of the day really. This is okay. Right, catch up with you later. So we've just stopped in this town uh, for a little drink, uh, coffee. We were hoping some food but they didn't do any food unfortunately. Colin and Sarah just turned up so they've had a coffee and we're pressing on. Let's see how far we've got to go. Trip data, 123 kilometres from here. So we're still on the CM401, but as you can see, it started to get a little more interesting with a few curves to keep us awake. And if I remember right, you know, the last sort of 30, 40 kilometres is uh, going to get more windy as we approach the uh, Parador. Just look in the chiller cabinet and they are 1.5 euros. Lovely. Right, we've only got to another 55 kilometers to do. So that should give us uh, time to have a little walk around the town and uh, 
see what's what in Guadeloupe because it's meant to be very nice. Anyway, the temperature now is it's gone up to oh, it's, it looked a minute ago, it's, I think it's 31, 32 degrees. So, anyway, catch up with you in a little while as we get closer. And we're now on to, we just turned right onto the CM411, and we've got 18 kilometres of this. Let's increase the speed a little bit, I think. It's dry as a dry thing here, it's 32 degrees currently. We have 52 kilometres to go. Now uh, we just turn left onto the CM411 for a continuation of that. We're in Puerto de San Vincent. And I think these are the last hills before we get to Guadalupe, is uh, 34 kilometres from here. Yeah, looking wiggly ahead, so I think I'll show you some of that when we get up into it. I'll show you a bit of this road here, this is the EX102 it's now turned into. Got some views from up here. Continuation of that road, just running up the other side. The EX102, this is. series of bends if you look at the screen most of the way to Guadeloupe or Guadeloupe I assume this is Guadeloupe. I think I'll go straight on here, don't you? We're trying to get back on track. Keep right. Keep your fingers crossed, but I'll recognise the street when we get there. Uh, where do we go here? Oh, for, go that way. Oh, that's all locked off. Alright, yeah, bottom of the street, turn right, I recognise it now. So we'll be turning into the one-way street that we've got to come back down tomorrow just got to find the entrance into the garage uh, where that blue car's going to park that's where we're going
He's having to stop and then start again because he was flipping around there. Well, that's my excuse anyway. Does that work? That was, uh, I couldn't jump out of the way because I had the car there. <laughs> right, let go, please. Just let go. Thank you. Where do we go? Straight. Okay, so after dropping my bike uh, on that uh, entrance into the hotel, we've now taken all the bracketry off, bent, rebent it back straight, and good to go, hopefully. So this is the hotel at the Parador in Guadeloupe. Lots of hanging space here in the entrance. Bathroom with all the usual twin basins, but all the usual equipment in here. Sorry about the lighting, that goes weird. This is the bedroom we've got, which is a double room, TV, and we've got a balcony here, which overlooks the outside or the exterior restaurant area down there. Like before, there's a, an internal seating area in a courtyard in the center, because it's all built around a sort of square, if you like. Right, we're gonna have a shower and uh, a well-earned beer and catch up with you later. Cheers. Right viewers, we've just left the hotel. We've just filled up with juice, as you probably just saw there. And uh, if you were watching last night, I had a little bit of a off entering the uh, parking area to the garage. My feet missed the ground. The angle of the dangle going into the uh, car parking area was not as I expected. Fat Bertie here took me over. Second exit I've got here. So we've got just over 200 miles to go to our next hotel. The uh, this has got a long title to it, but it's the Luna something or other hotel up the Estrella Pass on one of the uh, high roads in Portugal. So Portugal is our target today, it's 323 kilometres, which I believe on well, my app it said it was about 203 miles, so it shouldn't be too difficult, but there's a lot of wigglies at this end and there's a lot of wigglies at the other end and a bit of straight bit in the middle, if you'll pardon my simplification of this. 
So I'm just getting back into the... Uh, my pride was hurt a little bit last night, dropping the bike. And um, just getting my eye in, so to speak, this morning before we go mad. Not mad, that's the wrong expression, isn't it? Temperature now is 22. The time is just come out to 10 o'clock. We had a bit of a birthday celebration for Wayne last night, and uh, some people did get in an early night. So we decided to have a slightly easier start time this morning. Welcome back. We're only a few kilometres down the road, but I thought I'd uh, film a little bit of this because it's quite a windy little section with some great views here. So we're on the EX102, which I think was the an extension of what we were on last night as we approached the uh, hotel. I also made a bit of a mistake this morning as I came out of the hotel. Well, they've got a bit of a fiesta going on, so some of the roads are blocked. When you come out of that hotel, if you stay there, do not go up the hill. It is a one-way road going up, so you're going across this flow of traffic, but for goodness sake, go down the hill as you come out of the car park, because it's a warren of little turns and whatever. Anyway, did that bit, then I went wrong further up the road and went down this alleyway with a sharp 90 degree downhill well I, I've never ridden anything so tight and I haven't ridden it I didn't ride it I crept my way round an inch at a time on the brakes downhill cambers all over the place and it was the worst worst bit of uh, corner I've ever had to get myself down which is great after the uh, drop last night really Poor old Michael on his Panigale followed me down, the others I was able to, to uh, indicate don't come down and they went round. God knows what happened there. I think my route is okay on the, uh, the route we used, it's just that because the Fiesta we, we got uh, a bit sidetracked there and they some of the roads were blocked. But we just uh, negotiated this bend. the CC214 CC22 this one I think yeah this is the one yeah. CC21.1 So viewers, here we are on the CC129, I'm showing you real Spain now, potentially one way traffic here but I can't see any tractors coming, sharp right just after the bridge. I have to open that visor, it's just too hot. 27 and a half degrees. Anyway, get, get the idea viewers. It's a bit narrow on this particular road. But you do see the countryside. We've got, we've got a bit of goatage going on here. Oh, that was interesting for a moment. So we did 24, 25 kilometres of that little windy through the farmland, goats yards, etc. We turned right onto the CC. 23.4. Has anybody seen points on the, on the road numbers before? I had never. Anyway, here we go. It's a bit faster, a bit smoother. It's going to be a warm one. I think it's going to be 33 in this local area today. About 30 or up to 30. Where are we going? near Covila, just to the west of Covila. I'm going.
All right, so a little coffee stop there in this village. Let's push that round a bit. I say, I think the sitting there in the heat, I left my sat nav on, and oh, it's clearing now. Down the left hand side of it, it's all gone shadowy. It's got too hot, I think. Yeah, it's gradually clearing now. Right, we've got 250 kilometres to go, viewers, and it's uh, 31 degrees, and it's half past 11, I think, yeah, 11.30 approximately. And we're about to join the 23.1. Yeah, left here, 23.1. We now joined or merged into the CV2231, a lesser road. Wish I had my camera on back there. We just come past an entrance to a farm and there was a cow laid on this side dead. Not very nice. It was definitely dead. It was definitely on this side. I've worked with cows. That was not good. <laughs> And we're now on the EX373 for the next 22 kilometres at least before we get on to the N630, I'm being reminded here. Just a quick update, that last road we were on, that uh, fast, smooth, two-lane highway. Um, I didn't have a camera on, of course. It saw some barriers up ahead and some rough ground. I thought, oh, it's just going to send us round it. No. No, no, it's a dead end. Just the road stopped. <laughs> so we had to come back and we've just gone up the motorway a few miles to the to the first stop and uh, to the first exit. And we're now seeking fuel for the petrol Panigale. Well, we might as well all top here. Yeah, someone stole my road. Yeah. That's not on, is it? It's a bit off, isn't it? You plan a route and what happens? We could still take it. I think we'll stop and have a little refreshment, don't you? Just had a bit of a fill up. And a little bite, they've got some chairs and tables to the side. It's not a restaurant as such, but they've got some little food nibbles and things there. And it's 31 degrees, we needed more hydration. So we're off again now. I thought I'd show you a bit more of this scorched Spain. These windy roads that I've uh, rooted us on. I think I may have forgotten to uh, mention who's with us today, but it's the usual crew of Wayne, Brian, uh, Rob, uh, Michael, but we've also got uh, Ralph Fogg with us for the first time today. Glad to have you with us, Ralph. Hope you enjoyed your day with us. First thing of interest in quite a few miles, we've got a river down here, we're going to cross over bridge on the EX372 Is it 34 degrees on yours? <laughs> Here we go, over the river The Alagorn Well that's greener than a green thing isn't it? It's got some nutrients or something in there Don't know if we're in Portugal yet, but EX 108. So we've made good time. It's only a 200 mile or anyway. And the time now is 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 uh, 15 minutes past two o'clock or 14:15 if you prefer. Mm. 
we're on the N219. We've just entered into Portugal. Just for the record, it's 34 degrees now. This is the 10th of September. Oh, camera's off and running again. Must be the heat. Give me SD error warnings. Okay, so we've got 56 kilometres to go. 34 degrees. And uh, it's 3.30. I suppose it's not now because we've gone back into Portugal, so it's 2.30 I think. Yeah, it's 2.30, so that's why the arrival time is 3.25. So we've got to go left here. Yep, bad fire through here. Good hell. And for the viewers, we're just coming up to the sort of the hills of Kavia ahead of us over there. We're going up over the top. So just thought I'd show Kavia spread out in front of us here. We're 20 kilometers from our hotel, which is up in the mountains. For 90 kilometer speed limit along here, so we're just being cautious. Don't want the end of the day with a ticket, although we haven't seen any in Portugal itself, although it's flashed a couple of times as if there was a speed trap somewhere. Just thought I'd show you a bit of uh, Copia, as I think my son have calls it. As we make our way up to the Estrella. So we've just come up through this town of Cavilla. Cavija. So we've got uh, eight kilometres up to the top and our hotel. A little bit of twiddlies before we get there. It's all cobbled streets. Well, not all cobbled, but there's a lot of cobbled streets through there. A lot of bloody traffic lights that we got caught in. I hate cobbled streets. Oh, that's nice. A bit cooler. Look at the view from up here. Did you like those hairpins? They were a bit tight, weren't they? <laughs> there it is, the yellow thing in front of us. Oh, good cobbles. Yeah, baby, we're here. Right, viewers, what do you think of that one? And um, there's a bit of a view. So we're right on the edge of the Australia here and looking out over Kavia. Pretty impressive, huh? Right, we'll catch up with you inside before we trash the uh, bedroom. Right, quick bit of film here. We're at the Hotel Luna Estrada in uh, Portugal. Our first night of two. And uh, this is the bedroom. So we've got a lobby here with hanging area, etc. Off the lobby, it's bathroom with all the usual equipment. And then off the lobby, they've got one bedroom here, which is a twin room. It's a triple room. There's the other room. More wardrobes in here. 
but look at the view. Might have to open the window here to show you properly. So that's looking down over Covila or Covija. That's where we are for two nights. Not bad, eh? It's been uh, 33 degrees for the last couple of hours. So it's uh, been a lot of hydration required on the way here. And uh, we've arrived at uh, half past three local time, because of course Portugal is the same as London time. So you put your clocks back an hour, that's it. Right, I think a shower is required. So I'll catch up with you later or tomorrow morning. Cheers now.